not prepared. Illidan, you're wrong once again. I am prepared, and after this video, a lot of players will be ready to rock the new expansion. So, what's bring us the new expansion from an hardware perspective? Finally, we have the DirectX 12 API. To understand the differences, I've made a side-by-side -side comparison on the left with DirectX 11 and on the right with DirectX 12. What you're seeing now is the time test run, is an integrated benchmark with the command slash time test space one. And it disabled all the player, the respawn of the player, the NPC and the world effect, such like weather and uh, night and day. I didn't notice any particular changes to the static world, maybe a slightly better definition in the texture. I did the same comparison without the command time test. Now we have all the effects enabled, lightning and weather. What I see here is a better dynamic range overall, nothing big, but it's some kind of improvement and personally I like it. These are the components I used for the test. The two Ryzen G APU, a Ryzen 7 2700X, the unlocked Core i3 and the 8700K. For the GPU, we have the Vega 8 and Vega 11 of the Ryzen APU, an RX 560 and a 570, a GTX 1060 and a GTX 1080. All those components are mixed up and tested together to have like 20 different configuration, except for the Vega 8 and Vega 11, of course. With every motherboard, I used the G-Skill Flare X 3200 C14 kit, C-Sonic PSU, EK water block uh, custom liquid cooling for the high-end solution, then the stock cooler for the Ryzen G APU, the Samsung 960 Evo, and Windows 10 with the lastest patches and updates. From the beginning of this test, I've been using the AOC G2590VXQ as display, which is a free sync 75Hz 1ms, and with a free sync range that goes from 35 to 75Hz. Usually I don't talk about displays in a performance review, but in this game we have always performance issues and frame drops regardless the hardware we are running. But we have two important technologies that came to our help, NVIDIA G-Sync and AMD FreeSync. There are a lot of common misconceptions, but the G-Sync and AMD FreeSync does exactly the same thing. The big difference between the two is the price. To buy a G-Sync display, you have to pay around $150 more. So if you are building a budget gaming PC, the choice of an AMD FreeSync display is quite obvious. Another important feature of the variable frame rate display is the low frame rate compensation. This is the technology from AMD, Nvidia have something similar. This is not present in every AMD FreeSync display, so make sure if you are buying a new one that is LFC capable. About the VSync on and off, there is always a debate. Personally, I prefer to use the VSync on as AMD suggests. In World of Warcraft, I didn't notice too much of input lag. And when I play with the Ryzen G APU, I found it better and smoother. The first test I did was a Gryphon run in Cool Tiras. With the command slash time test one, you can check the performance of your actual system. This type of benchmark is useful to understand more or less the performance doing quest and world quest. If you have an average of more than 60 FPS, you're going to be fine most of the time. If you are between 40 and 60 FPS without FreeSync or G-Sync, 
you have more chance to perceive the frame rate drop. And if you have less than 40 frames per second, well, you should be less ambitious and lower the detail. Let me show you an example. With this configuration, I had an average uh, FPS of 70. Here, in a big fight, I tried to bring all the NPC that I could find. Uh, you can see that uh, we are around 60, 65. It's not that far from the average that the Gryphon Run gave me. And if you stay within the range of the free sync, you will not notice any frame drops. With DX12, unfortunately, we didn't get the multi-trading approach, so the game is still single-traded. And because of that, the Intel CPU, especially with the last generation, is performing better. In World of Warcraft, the performance are heavily dependent by the CPU power. But the good thing is that even a quad-core CPU can deliver high FPS. The new Zen Plus architecture is very close to the Intel CPU. And I'm very curious about the new Ryzen 3 and Ryzen 5 that are going to be launched in the market in the next month. I will do the same benchmarks to compare as soon as I can get a sample to test. As you can see, at 1080p, a GTX 1080 is overkill. It makes sense to go above a GTX 1060 or RX 570 only if you play at higher resolution or with widescreen display. I did find a couple of weird behavior with the RX 560 that is performing way lower than expected and as well the GTX 1060 paired with the Ryzen G2400. I hope this is a driver issue that will be fixed uh, as soon as possible. I came to that conclusion because I did the same exact test in DirectX 11 and as you can see the cards are performing much better. Another interesting fact is that the AMD cards are gaining performance in DirectX 12 and the Nvidia cards are losing performance. I will check again the results in a couple of months. One of the main goals of this review is to relate the price with the performance. I'm very surprised about how a i3 unlocked and a RX 570 can match or even perform slightly better than a more expensive configuration. And another combo that surprised me is the 2200G. If you have already this system, you can buy an RX 570 and play maxed out, at least for world quest, general questing and dungeons. I'm currently testing the raids, so you have to wait to the second part of this video to see the full benchmarks. I did the same test at quality 7, and now the lower end configuration became playable. The 2200G, overclocked and paired with a pre-sync display, is one of the best cost-effective solutions for World of Warcraft. And here the results at quality 4, if you want to drive a high refresh monitor or if you want to play at 75Hz with the Ryzen APUs. Last but not least, the dungeon performance test. I chose Waycrest Manor because the storyline is just awesome and then in 15 minutes you can clear this dungeon if you have a good party and then there's uh, not too much trash mobs so it's more boss focused and it's perfect for this type of benchmark. In this benchmark, as reference, I'm using the 1% lows. Capturing the lowest 1% of the frame rates is very useful to understand how low your frame rate can drop in a big fight such like a big pool or a boss fight. The configuration, capable of more than 50 FPS, can run just great. At 3540, we are in the lower limit of the free sync. If you're using free sync or eventually G sync, your experience will be probably just great. But if you don't have this technology in your display, maybe you need to lower from quality 10 to quality 7. If you have less than 30 FPS, you can still play. But personally, I'm a tank, so I need everything to be super smooth. Benchmarking a game like World of Warcraft is not easy. There's a lot of variable to take in consideration, a lot of things that can change. It's not an exact science, so the best way, to me, is to show you some gameplay of the configuration that I tested. Take a look at the core usage, the graphic on the GPU load, 
and the overall frame per second. It's crystal clear that we are in a CPU limited situation and well, I'm using an 8700K at 5 GHz. With this configuration, we have a situation that is more balanced. We have both the CPU and the GPU at their limits. But if you look at the FPS counter, we are very similar to the configuration that you just saw. And that costs like twice. With this configuration, we are heavily CPU limited. If you look at the GPU utilization, it's kind of going from 30 to 100% and the CPU is maxed out. And this is the exact same GPU that I was using in the last video you saw with a different CPU, scoring almost double the FPS. With this same configuration, switching from quality 10 to quality 7, now we have a frame rate that is good to play. We are still CPU limited, but at least now with this uh, quality 7 configuration, I was able to play. And I'm talking about a normal display without the free sync, because when I'm recording, I'm using an external HDMI device, so I'm not able to run with free sync and I'm limited to 60 Hz. The test at quality 7 and 4 gave me a result that uh, I was not really expecting. Let's do some analysis. It's interesting how a CPU can change the results. Here we have two different levels of GPU, the 570 and the 560, and two quad-core CPU. But the unlocked i3 can push to the limit an RX 560 and the 2400G is clearly limiting the GPU. So that's why it's very important to know the system we are building or transforming and choose the right components. Another example is with a high-end CPU and a good GPU like the RX 570, lowering the detail does not always give an improvement at least not the perception of an improvement because we have the same low and a slightly higher average. Being a CPU intensive game, as well if you play with quality 4, 7, 10 and you are heavily CPU limited, don't go with a high-end graphics card because basically you're wasting your money. Here we have another interesting consideration to do. The 2200G is the cheapest configuration that I've tested but when overclocked, it can deliver a very nice performance. Looking at those numbers doesn't really look great, so let me show you with a gameplay how it is. At quality 4, we are not using the GPU at its maximum potential. We have a good frame rate and with a V-Sync monitor we can play without any problems, but we can ask for more. Now, at quality 7, we have reached the maximum usage of the GPU. But unfortunately, the frame rate is not enough to let the free sync do his job. So, what do we do? Well, overclock is free. And if you do it properly, you don't have any issue and you can play at quality 7. Raising the GPU to 1600 MHz and the CPU to 4 GHz, now we can play in the range of FreeSync. For a $95 CPU, it's not that bad, huh? If I have to pick the best entry-level configuration, the choice goes to the AMD Ryzen 3 2200G. Paired with a fast memory kit, you can play up to quality 7, 
and you can upgrade your system with a dedicated graphics card like the RX 570 to play at quality 10. And with a system like this, you should really take in consideration an AMD FreeSync display, like the AOC G2590 VXQ that I reviewed a couple of weeks ago. You should check it out. My favorite combo is the Intel Unlocked Core i3 with the RX 570. I hand performance at low cost. It may not have a good multi-threading capability, but if you only play World of Warcraft or eSports games, this is the best choice you can make. Speaking of multi-threading, the best general purpose and future-proof is the AMD Ryzen 7 2700X. 16 threads and a good single thread performance makes this CPU perfect for every situation. For the best performance, we have the Intel Core i7 8700K and the GTX 1080. This is like stating the obvious, but don't forget that even with this configuration, you may experience some frame drops, so a G-Sync display is highly recommended. Here you can find a comparison between the GPU, and keep in mind that if you don't have a good CPU, buying an expensive graphic card is useless. Here we have the CPU. To play at 144Hz is expensive. With Intel, you have to overclock and with AMD, you have to buy very fast memories. So, what's next? In the second part of this video, I would like to benchmark the rides, but at the moment they are not always open and I don't know when I can finish this work. I will test as well other resolution like QHD and 4K. Another thing that I want to cover in the next video is how to optimize a custom graphics profile. The presets are good, but you can manage to have a good graphic quality and good performance by tweaking some of the settings. And to be able to set your RAID profile is a must do if you don't want to have any surprise. As always, I'm open to suggestions, so your feedback is very important. I will pin a comment so you can write down what you want to see and I'll do my best to put it in the second part of the video. To make a review like this, it takes weeks of work and I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to support my channel, like, subscribe and share, it's very important to me. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one!